if I now go back to my photograph of smoke, by nature, of course, it's white on black, and I have to imagine in my head it's going to be the opposite. But for right now, I'm just going to use camera raw to say, okay, I really want to get everything that's not smoke dark. So I'm trying to push, push the shadows down. I have the clipping warning turned on, which is why you're seeing blue. If I turn that off, then it's just we're just seeing black and white. I would probably also lower the saturation because there was bits of blue showing up in there, which I don't, that's distracting me. It's not going to be a problem, but I don't really need it there. Uh, I just want it to look good. I'm going to push the highlights up and then hit open object. It's going to apply all those settings. And right now, if I define this as a brush, I would have a really, whoops, sorry, a really weird brush because I'd have a whole bunch of non-smoke and a hole in the middle because remember, black is my brush, white is see-through. So right now, it would be the opposite of what I need. So one of the things that you have to get in your head whenever you're looking at something going, well, that would make a good brush, is sometimes you have to mentally invert it and say, it's going to be ultimately the other way around, but will that even work? So in that example of the guy that was dropping milk into the water, he had to do the same thing, was ultimately invert it so it looked like black milk on a white backdrop. Okay? So, Here's how I need to do this if I want to be able to play around with this because honestly when you're making a brush out of something that's vague like this, I don't know yet how white I need it to be. I might need to be whiter than this or not as white because I have to kind of determine that. So I want to preserve the ability to be able to go back and forth the camera raw, but I also want to be able to do a test brush and see how it works. So what I do in order to do that is I use an adjustment layer called invert. And that now shows me, okay, now we have black on white, but as you can see, it's not really black at all, it's gray. Now, because ultimately this is supposed to be a smoky, cloudy, see-through brush, I might be okay with it being dark gray. But if I want a little more, now that I know that, this is a camera raw smart object, just means I can jump right back to camera raw. I'm gonna say, okay, I want to go even brighter with this. Remember, brighter is going to end up being darker. This is where you have to do that kind of little mind trick to yourself to try to get it looking the way you want. And then when I update, there we go. Now it's, there's at least some areas that are a lot darker. Now again, you might not want that. That's where you have to kind of figure it out. Now, in an ideal world, I would love it if this brush just kind of was all encompassed in here because right now if I made this a brush, it's going to have a very hard edge on each side. And that's just the nature of the amount of smoke that I have in here. So if I didn't want that, I'd have to come up with some solution. The easiest one would probably be to add a new layer below and then make a mask. But don't paint with that weird brush I just made. Go back to a more typical soft edge brush. That's probably a little big. All I'm trying to do is hide the edges of this brush using black, or this smoke, I should say, and try to, this is where I would try to obviously take a bit more time and make it not just look like I painted with my brush and use different levels of opacity, things like that to make it more gradual, perhaps. And then underneath this, if I fill this with white, that'll, whoops, he said fill with white and he filled with black. Oh, that's because invert is there. Okay, sorry, there we go. So I'm doing this rather haphazardly and quickly, but just to show you the idea. Now, I don't really want all this stuff down here, so I would take a lasso tool and just try and get roughly around this part. I still have gonna have a bit of an edge on here. So one of the misnomers that's out there is people somehow got the idea that in order to define a brush, it has to be rectangular selection. It does not. Anything you have selected with any selection tool will be a brush or can be defined as a brush. If you have nothing selected, it will take the whole document. So now I choose define brush preset and now I have my smoky brush. And what I normally do while I have all this actively happening and I haven't committed anything yet is to switch to some other document. Let's use uh, something else like this one. Add a new layer, take my brush tool. Right away, it's very smart. It says, oh, here's the brush you just created. It happens to be, by total coincidence, a fairly good size for this, but of course I could knock the size down and then I click and you'll see it's 
very, oh, I got a very low opacity, that's why, let's try 100%. So there's our little smoky brush, so it's on a layer by itself, which means now if I wanted to, I could experiment with blend modes and opacity and things of that nature. Now, you can use this in tons of different ways. Obviously, it could be very useful as like a brush that looks like smoke, but remember any paintbrush, and this is an important aspect of creating and using brushes in Photoshop, any paintbrush is gonna take on your one foreground color. So for example, if I wanted this smoky effect to be red and green, well, it's not gonna be red and green, it's gonna be either red or green because I choose a foreground color and say, I think I'd like to see what it looks like in red, then when I paint, it'll be red version. So if you're trying to create, for example, a background to put behind someone that just looks interesting and unusual, you might have to double and triple up and say, now I'll make another new layer, and in this one, I'll change my foreground color to something else, and put that in there, and maybe change this so I can change the angle. I'm just, I just did, without even saying it out loud, I should say this out loud, I just used the button that I already set up for right click, so it pops up the option for this tool, so I can very quickly, let's get rid of that last one I just did, say it, I want it to be a different angle and smaller, like not that small. Okay. And of course you can also change blend modes and opacity and all those things, but by piling up several different options or different colors on different layers and then playing around with how they work with each other, you're gonna, I mean, who knows what you might end up with. And this is not intended to be a, I'm going for this specific look here. This is just to show you from start to finish, going through and creating a brush. Now there are things about this I don't like, and one of them is because of the nature of that smoky photo, in some angles of brush I see a very hard line on there. So I would probably go back to this other document where I was creating my brush and do a bit more masking and or make a more feathered selection or something just so that the edge of, you didn't see a very hard edge like that. And one of the things that comes with practice of making a brush is you start to think about that and say, well, uh, if I'm gonna take a photograph of something to turn into a brush, I'm gonna leave myself a bit of extra room so I don't end up with something that gets cut off on the end and doesn't, has that hard edge I don't like, okay?